folks, this is Darren with My RV Works. Today we're in Port Angeles, Washington. It's raining outside, but that's our winter up in the Northwest. Uh, don't get too much snow, but just a lot of rain. Um, so what we're working on today is a Dometic refrigerator. The customer states that when they it works on electricity, but it will not work on gas. Well, we know we have gas pressure because our stove works. So to troubleshoot this refrigerator, we need to go to the outside. We're going to get wet, yay, and we're going to troubleshoot what's going on with that thing. Now, the mode we're going to put our refrigerator in is we're going to put it in automatic, and we're going to put it in, um, we're going to turn it on and put it in automatic. And if you see, the check light just came on. So that further confirms the customer's statement that it will not work on LP. So let's go on the outside and get in the rain and see what we're going to do here. So we're going to pop that out. This is your drain. The other end of this should go directly into your drip tray of your refrigerator. It's good to have a little bit of a P-trap in there, P-trap being a low spot right here. Because if I blow into this, <gasps> big breath. There, I'm blowing nice warm air right into your refrigerator compartment. Your door seal might be totally sealed, but you have a breach to the outside. So it's not, I like to put a little bit of a P-trap in there just to kind of collect some water right in this area to kind of prevent this nice warm air to go inside of your refrigerator food compartment. That's the first thing. So, um, obviously we're gonna, it's, it's already unplugged. I mean, it's, it, it's unplugged because it's not plugged into the, uh, the, the, the short cord. Uh, so here we have the 12 volts feeding the refrigerator. We have a, a control board right here. Um, here's our gas valve. And real quick, let's just see, yep, okay. So to see, if you look down in here, there's a little crosshair on that um, valve. It, it's going in the direction of the valve. Come down here just a little bit, right in there. You still can't see it. Okay, you see that little line on that valve? That tells me that the gas valve is open compared to, let me rotate that if it'll let me. Okay, I just rotated it. See now it goes up and down? Mm. Okay, so that's the first thing that I would look for. I just opened it. So now I'm gonna move this cover off so I can see my flame. I wanna make sure I've got a spark and see if I have any kind of a flame. So we're gonna take, what is that, a Phillips P2 bit right there? Let me keep the tools dry. And we're gonna take this one screw off the top. We're gonna to, here's another little test. We're gonna push in this little reset button. I haven't done it yet. I don't I think it's not gonna be popped out. But if your refrigerator is not working, it's a Dometic and it has this, just take a peek and let's just push this in. It's a high limit thermostat. Uh, if this got too hot, your target's around 360 thereabouts depending on other variables. But uh, if this gets too hot, this might trip out. So we're gonna take this screw loose here on the top right here. Well, I need a right angle, hold on. Had it been tripped, would it have felt any different when you pushed it or anything? Yeah, if it was tripped when you pushed it, you would have felt like a little bit of a detent. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, you would have felt like a little bit of a push. Or poosh. Kind of poosh. a little click to it. Yeah, yeah. Like a little click. Same thing on your water heaters. Okay. Ooh, that's fancy. Fancy, fancy. I have a tool fetish. <laughs> that's why I do this, because I like your tools. <laughs> so now that we've taken that screw off, this should just slide out. Now we got to push down right here, and there's a little bit of a, a dimple in it. There. Now the whole thing comes out. The dimple we're looking at is this dimple right here. Of course, it's like that. Gotcha. So you got to pop the dimple off and this little clip, you have to overcome that little profile there. But one screw is the whole thing comes off. Now we can see our gas burner. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to reset my board. So I'm just going to take, of course I could walk back in side and turn it on and off again, or I could just reset the 12 volt. Okay. So essentially then, you've just flipped the switch I on. I just the, turned the switch on and yeah. switched back off again. Sometimes you need to push a button, but let's just see. I should I see I see a spark there in a second. Um, we could also pop the cover off and pull the fuse. We might do that too. We popped our cover off. Um, to take the cover off, flathead screwdriver, you just reach in there and kind of pry that to the side and one on the side pry it to the side it clips on down here on the bottom the top just hooks on these little tabs on the top so it just pops right off it 
So that didn't seem to reset it. So now you're gonna right. So now I'm gonna pull the fuse right there. Uh, what I expect is a nice healthy 12 volts. So I'm going to reference the same ground that they're referencing right here, and I expect 12 volts. I don't have 12 volts. There's my 12 volts. Hmm. Oh, this is fun. Okay, hold on. So again, referencing their same 12 volts, I'm going to go over here. There's my 12 volts going into the switch. There's my 12 volts leaving the switch, and I expect 12 volts on this pin right here. There it is. Okay, so the board's getting 12 volts. Okay. This is my eyebrow board wire. Plug it back in. I heard a click. And what I'm waiting for is a click, click, click sound. So look there, I'm not getting a spark right there. There's no spark coming there. And look, here's our, here's our fault right there. Whoa. See that? There's the, the, yeah. this, this electrode has been shorted. If you come from right here, Luke, you can see a I can spark. See it. I can see it okay. on this side. So let me go get a new electrode wire. So there's our problem with our um, refrigerator. Cool. There's a short to ground. Now if we move this out of the way, now this will shock the, the manure out of you. <laughs> so it, I'm gonna wait for it to be done right now, but... Um, that's it. Yeah, so let me, I'm not even gonna unplug it. I'm just gonna wait. Because this thing will kind of hurt quite a bit um, if you don't, if you're not careful. So if we look here, we can see this this defect in this wire. It's like it got chewed on or closed on or something it like that. got pinched. It got pinched. So I might have one of these in my inventory. Let me go check. So basically I've pulled it away from the, the wire. I can run my finger across this and feel all these little bumps in that wire that got hurt. Okay, so we're gonna pull it away from all the all the metal things that it's gonna ground itself on. And let's um let's start it and see if we can get it to work being away. We still need to replace this, but I don't happen to have one of these electrodes in my inventory right now. And there you go. So um the problem refrigerator works fine on gas. The problem was this electrode wire was um, shorting shorting out. Okay, so um, hope that helps. Uh, <laughs> this is Darren in a rainy, where are we at? Port Angeles, Washington, and um, where happy campers say my RV works. Hope these videos help. Okay, this is Darren signing off. I'm going to go get dry.